I hope that this video will help you to better understand what can be done with the basic 1800 watt or 2500 watt ZVS induction heater and to select components to get you to your own goals. First you will see a few upgrades designed to make the system more reliable and easier to use and maintain. You'll also see my particular favorite upgrade of adding an online dedicated cheap frequency counter to the system to help me to better understand the dynamics of work coil design and work materials. And finally, we will test several different kinds of work materials to see how they affect the frequency of the tank circuit. Okay, let's take a little walk around of the uh, updates we've made recently. First, I've changed water pumps. This is the water pump that came with, the, with my 1800 watt combo 2 kit and it's a pretty powerful little pump but I suspected it of starting to get electrically noisy when I was in the process of trying to get my frequency meter up and running. So I changed it over to the same style of pump that I used successfully for quite a while on my 1000 uh, watt uh, unit. If you've watched my earlier videos, you also know that I've shortened the water lines here considerably. They were kind of hooped up in the air. I also added a larger expansion tank. Originally, I just had about an 8 inch long uh, clear tube, uh, but I decided I need more expansion room. You'll also notice the water's kind of rusty, and that's because my radiator uh, down here is uh, an old one and it had rust in it. Every now and then I take this battery water adding suction device and go in there and suck out whatever I can get at and replace it with clean water. I've added this meter panel which shows temperature of the radiator, uh, current, if I get the view just right, with as, as you've heard me say before, an analog ammeter and my new frequency counter. The little dot after the 37 tells me it's reading in kilohertz. So I have the idle current is on right now at about six amps and the thing is kind of naturally running at 37.8 kilohertz with this particular two and five eighths ID 10 turn coil. And I believe there are 12.33 microfarad capacitors hiding under those fans. Frequency counter was a huge problem to get going. Um, I, I first bought this kit for three bucks, built the kit, and then uh, when I couldn't get it reading correctly, um, I uh, found out it had to have a five volt square wave input right into the little PIC uh, computer chip. And so I spent some time trying to borrow a gate signal from my uh, 1800 watt unit, ended up shorting the gate out and blowing a MOSFET. So then I gave up on that, then I tried a radio frequency reading meter and realized after a while that was in the wrong range. So then I went back to this one and finally realized that I was going to have to, I couldn't get away with just making some sort of a passive conditioning network. And so I ended up with this uh, uh, Schmidt trigger arrangement here. This is a uh, uh, TTL uh, hex uh, Schmidt trigger, hex inverter Schmidt trigger. And then I built a passive conditioning network for the Schmidt trigger and finally got a square wave out of the uh, that setup that would uh, successfully run the uh, frequency meter. It's little pick controller needs a 5 volt square wave and I don't have one here without screwing up the gate signals so I had to after a lot of fooling around uh, go to a go to a uh, Schmidt trigger hex inverter and uh, do a lot of juggling to come up with a good input conditioning circuit so that the thing would actually take in a sine wave that's delivered from this 40 tur 44 turn coil 
that is in close proximity to the work coil. And that goes through wires back to the uh, Schmidt trigger uh, uh, setup for the frequency counter. But it's working just fine now. Unbelievable all I went through uh, to get there. Uh, I don't know if anybody care to ever sit down and read all that tragedy, but uh, maybe someday I'll publish the notes I wrote to myself. If you saw my other videos, you knew that this is a 30 amp circuit breaker that came with my 1800 watt unit. And I've learned a little more about circuit breakers, not enough obviously, but this thing uh, uh, is apparently of some sort of a Euro style circuit breaker that's rated for um, uh, 30 amps AC at 230 to 460 volts but also rated at the same current for up to 60 volts DC. So for the 2500 watt unit here, I really needed more. So I found the same uh, class of circuit breakers up to the 40 amp range. And one of these days I'll stick this one in there uh, when I start to do extended work. Uh, people have different opinions about whether an AC rated circuit breaker will work on DC or not. I don't know what the true answer is, but ever since I first hooked this up to the 1800 watt unit, I've been using it as the DC on off switch. So certainly uh, it's able to quench whatever arcs occur when you do shut off the DC current. So I'm gonna stick with it until something goes bad. You of course can decide for yourselves. If you saw my earlier videos, you know I had a very big, very noisy fan. So I stuck a smaller muffin fan in here, uh, particularly for today's video, so that the darn fan wouldn't be making such a noise. The big fan, of course, is, is hiding down in here. So I've also added a power strip here, and I know that's kind of a kludge, but uh, turning on that, that switch on the power strip uh, enables the uh, cooling fan, whichever one is plugged in, and two wall warts. One wall wart is the one that runs the frequency meter and the Schmidt trigger, and the other wall wart is the one that runs the water pump. And the water pump is connected through this little, this is really just a terminal strip with an LED on it uh, that connects the water pump uh, to the uh, wall wart down there. Uh, the reason that I have that sitting there like that is one day I may actually decide to eliminate the buck converter here and uh, and hook the fans directly up to my this little uh, terminal strip and so I've got pins there that will allow me to do that. And the reason that I want to get rid of the buck converter here is if that if these fans take two or three amps then that's two or three amps that I can't use to heat stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Also, if you've been following along, I did say earlier on that I was going to add a couple of valves here, uh, mechanical water valves, so that make it easier to change the coil without losing water. Well, I've decided not to do that. I don't need the extra length that the valves would cause, and uh, what I found really is when I change coils, just a few drips come out, so I've got this little 3D printed pan here uh, to collect those drips. Now we will test the effect of varying workpieces and currents on the resonant frequency of our current system. Turn on the idling current and we're at about 6 amps and notice the frequency is 37.78 or thereabouts. So now we'll take a piece of inch and a quarter pipe and place it in there and I hope you'll be able to see the current readings but I'll read them to you. I have to point out the water temperature is 15.1 degrees and we've got the smaller fan running so it may heat up a little bit, we'll see. Anyway, inch and a quarter pipe, about 37.7 or 37.8 kilohertz, 6 amps, now we put a piece in there up to 10 amps, 37.8, 15 amps, 38.1, 20 amps, 38.3, 30 amps, 38.9, 35 amps, 39.2, 40 amps, uh, 39.5, 45 amps, 39.3. Okay, 
that's into the quarter pipe. Here we've got a one inch solid square bar. Again, 37.8, six amps. Now we put it in there, 10 amps, 37.6, 15 amps, 37.6, 20 amps, 37.6, that's interesting. Uh, 25 amps, 37.6. 30 amps, 37.6. 35 amps, 37.6. And that's as far as that goes. One inch bar. Here we have a 5 eighths inch square bar, 37.7, 37.8, okay. So 6 amps, 10 amps, 37.5, 15 amps, 37.4, 20 amps, 37.4, 25 amps, 37.3, 25 amps, 37.2, gonna let it cook a little bit, 37.1, 28 amps, 29 amps, 37.0, 30 amps, 36.9, 30 amps, 36.8, 31 amps, 36.8, 31 amps, 36.8, starting to glow way down in there. 36.8, 30 amps, 36.9, 26 amps already, 36.9, 24 amps, 37, 22 amps, hope I said that last one right, 22 amps, 37, 21 amps, 37.1, 20 amps, 37.1, Nineteen amps, thirty-seven point two. Eighteen amps, thirty-seven point two. Uh, Seventeen amps, thirty-seven point three. We're above the Curie point with most of it. Remember, this is a two and five eighths inch ID coil, so that's why this thing isn't getting hotter and drawing a lot more current. But at any rate, that's uh, thirty-seven point four, and we're now at about uh, sixteen amps. So that's how hot it got. It's uh, kind of a low orange to me. All right, last piece of steel for now. This is a one quarter by five sixteenths bar. I forgot what the temperature was originally. It was maybe, uh, I don't know, 15, 16 degrees Celsius. It's now 19.1. Okay, 37.8, quarter by five sixteenths bar. 10 amps, 37.6, 15 amps, 37.5, all the way down in there, about 18, uh, 17, 18 amps, 37.4, 19 amps, 20 amps, 37.3, 21 amps, 37.2, 21, 22 amps, 37.18, 32 amps, 37.2, now the temp, uh, current's dropping, 18 amps, 37.2, 16 amps, 37.3, 14 amps, 37.35, 13 amps, 37.4, let's call it, and now it's probably about as hot as it's going to get, 37.4, 12 amps, which is only 6 amps net, that's how hot that got. Okay, now we're going to switch horses. Here's a crucible, uh, empty, an empty graphite crucible with a uh, white ceramic outer shell. These work really nice for melting non-ferrous metals. So we've got 37.8, we're up to almost 20 degrees Celsius with our water, with our smaller cooling fan. So here we go, 37.85 roughly, 6 amps, 10 amps, 38.1, 15 amps, 38.5, 20 amps, 38.9, 35 amps, 39.6, all the way up to about 40 amps, 41.2. So 
that's empty graphite crucible okay now we've got another graphite crucible similar but not identical this one doesn't have the top shoulder sticking out and it's got uh, somewhat over 250 grams of scrap copper into it many of the pieces are almost the full length of the crucible a squished half inch uh, copper tube and then a whole bunch of other little stuff okay but this has got a lot of copper in it okay here we go 30 uh, what is it 37.8 okay uh, 10 amps 38.3 15 amps 38.9 20 amps uh, 39.6 25 amps 40.5 30 amps, 41.3, 35 amps, 42.1, all the way in is uh, 36 amps, and that's 42.5. So, there we go, back to 37.8, water's up to 20 degrees Celsius. Of course, we haven't been heating very much for very long. And as I think I will have already said, one of the reasons for putting the frequency meter on here is to see uh, what happens with various coils. But that's it for the uh, testing various materials and seeing what happens frequency-wise. Well, that wraps it up for today. You've seen my latest upgrades. You've also seen how the material in the work coil affects resonant frequency of the tank circuit. In the future, the frequency meter will help even more as I try different work coil designs. I will probably continue to make changes to the system, but I now finally have a machine that I can simply plug in and use. Thanks for watching.